I'll be making the introductions today for the investor presentations. So leading off, we have Brad Rogers, CEO of Red, White & Bloom, and Brad is going to be talking about Red, White & Bloom's plans to set a new standard in the U.S. cannabis industry. Let's give it up for Brad. Well, there we go. I'm in control, I think, now. It's not showing up here, but uh, anyhow. Um, Kev, uh, great remarks. Uh, I, I echo those. I think it's, uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, this is an unbelievable opportunity. This is the end of prohibition as we know it uh, on the rec side, but I, I think there's so many verticals that uh, cannabis can be applied to across uh, you know, food, beverage, uh, rec, um, medical, wellness. I think there's so many pieces to this that uh, you know, we're, this is the tip of the iceberg, and uh, we're bringing it uh, to the forefront as well. So um, when you look at um, the opportunity of what we're at today, um, I think um, everybody knows that this is going to be a massive opportunity. This is, this is a huge, huge uh, proposition for everybody here. Um, $23 billion, I think, is understated. $50 billion is probably understated as well. If you look at, uh, like I said, every vertical that this can go in, um, this, is, this is where it's at, and this is where we go <clears throat> to be able to take this out of prohibition. Um, so when you see the opportunity, the opportunity of, uh, of, of, of what we're doing right now at Red, White & Bloom. We started as a, as a little opportunity uh, in Canada. Uh, my, my career started in Canada. I was the first license in Canada. Uh, I started a company called Metrum. Metrum grew to uh, 250 employees. Uh, we took the company public and we subsequently sold to a company that uh, Kev's doing business with right now called Canopy. Sold that for half a billion dollars to Canopy. Uh, I moved off to that uh, into a very hyper-focused medical company uh, called Cantrust, which is going through its own issues right now, unfortunately, after I left. However, uh, we grew that from 2,000 patients to 70,000 patients. When you treat 70,000 people uh, with Within a two-year span, uh, growing from 2,000 to 70,000, that says a lot about the industry and what it's used for. And that was just medical. 70% of all of our medicine that went out the door wa were tinctures, and 70% of that 70% were CBD drops. So when you look at the uh, motivation to get high, it wasn't necessarily to get high, it was to get better. And I think that was a vertical that everybody should be looking at right now, and that's one of our verticals that we're looking at as well. Um, but we saw the opportunity in the arbitrage in the United States uh, to take what we had done in Canada uh, as, a, as a federally regulated framework and platform, uh, and what we did was also standardize cannabis in Canada. We had a label claim on every single product that went out the door, so your 30% gold cush was 30% every single time. So we want to do that here in America as well. We want to take every standard and put a label claim on every product that we put out the door. So when you look at what you're getting, it's like very similar to walking into the liquor store when you see 40% per volume on your spirit, you never guess that it's going to be 40%. It's 40% every single time. So we want to do that here in America. And the opportunity has never been better because we were able to actually scale that up in Canada. We're doing 50,000 kilograms a year in Canada. 1,000 kilograms a week off of our cultivation facility and we standardize production across flour, across extracts, etc. So um, the opportunity to be able to actually do that here in Canada and give everybody a consistent choice through product which will then relate to branding which is uh, uh, further down. That's, uh, that's effectively what we're going to do. And that's the opportunity right now. Cannabis market, as we all know, we've all seen the, uh, we've all seen the uh, Excel spreadsheets that go from bottom left to top right. Um, but that's never been more true here. And we've seen that happen in Canada. I think that's going to be happening exponentially faster here in the United States. Um, where we're focusing, we're focusing right now on two pieces. So we're focusing on the, the production side of it, so the, the cultivation side of it, because we have to. So at some point or another, the value chain is going to split, 
and uh, we're going to get out of the, the grow business effectively. I think there's going to be some other people that are going to be coming into the grow business that are going to be doing it a lot better and a lot bigger than, than we can. But we do it right now because that's going to be a hallmark and a platform of our brand and what we represent in the market. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, my analogy is I don't, I don't know who grows Starbucks beans, but I, I think they do a great job, but Starbucks is the brand. And so we want to be that brand and we want to represent those brands as well. So we're going to exit from the, the, the grow game when we get uh, qualified growers and standardized growers, uh, but we're doing that game right now to be able to bring those products to market and represent them the way we know how. Uh, the other side of it is obviously premium brand. So uh, when you look at what our strategy is, uh, at the end of the day, this is a commodity that's going to be branded. So um, you know, going back to the Starbucks piece, I spent four dollars on my coffee that probably cost them 17 cents to make this morning. Uh, and I think if we build a great brand, a great product, consistent product, which we know how to do, uh, we will be able to command those product, uh, those those margins as well. Um, our team that we put together, uh, we're not small scale. So we, what we've done is put a team together that has represented these brands uh, across the world. So we've actually added value to every single one of these brands that you see up there. Um, and uh, names and faces really don't matter right now, but these are the impact and a significant material impact on these brands that our team has put together. Um, Currently, right now, the markets that we're working in, uh, we started here in Michigan. So we saw an opportunity, started with two stores, grew to three, put some money together, uh, and we're effectively, right now, we've grown to be the biggest MSO that no one's ever heard of. We've privately raised over $100 million, privately, uh, because we've made a lot of people a lot of money. So to Kev's point, there's a lot of money to be made here, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just going and executing now. So right now in Michigan, we're running, running 14 stores. 14 stores doing $130 million in revenue. So when you look at the opportunity just in one state, putting up the garden wall around here, and that's just retail. Um, we've got 400,000 square feet of cultivation in build mode right now. So when you look at that opportunity, there's another probably $100 million of, of just revenue for the build side and grow side in Michigan. So when you look at Michigan, when we're done, we have another 11 APAs that we're going to be executing on after we finish this next uh, tranche of capital that we're bringing in. Uh, we'll be doing $300 million in, 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 in Michigan. It's a phenomenal state. Nobody really realized how, uh, how much volume is going through this state. It's, it's a very welcoming state. It's very easy to do business with these folks and they're very, very welcoming. It's, I think it's a it's an incredible opportunity. We've realized what, what it means to be here. We've been welcomed by the communities in here. Um, and I think, uh, I think it, it represents the uh, medical uh, industry very, very well right now. And the opportunity, obviously, is in 2020, being uh, a rec state, uh, we have a two-year moratorium on, uh, uh, on, on our licenses. So there'll be no new licenses, as I understand it, right now. Uh, for another two years after uh, after REC is implemented. So uh, massive, massive opportunity in Michigan, uh, but we didn't stop there. So we're building out Michigan, we're still growing in Michigan, uh, but we've also got uh, another opportunity uh, in, where are we here? Oh, it's not following here, sorry. Uh, in Illinois, we just bought uh, the biggest indoor premium CBD cultivation facility in the world, 3.6 million square feet. We have a million two planted right now, um, and uh, the rest is uh, in, in process of being planted right now as well. So when you look at that opportunity, that is a CBD opportunity, and that's a national play that we can actually uh, build some of our brands around as well. So when you look at uh, the opportunity within just the CBD piece of it, um, that's another uh, huge opportunity. Illinois just uh, also, uh, they just announced uh, recreational, so we're going after a recreational license there as well. So when you look at that opportunity, that will be the biggest uh, cannabis cultivation facility in the world right now. So um, the scope and the scale is actually bigger and, 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 uh, than I've ever, ever seen. So um, if that facility uh, comes into fru full fruition, um, there's going to be three, four hundred million dollars of revenue just out of that facility. 
And then we have retail on top of that, processing, cultivation, et cetera, um, which leads me to the processing and manufacturing. You look at the verticals that this can go in, we have to be very disciplined about where we're going to be spending our efforts. Um, I think as we divest ourselves of our grow later on, I think you know the manufacturing, the processing, and the, the distribution and the branding are gonna be key. Um, you look at us as an MSO, uh, Largest market cap MSOs are uh, Cure Leaf, Cresco, Harvest, Cavebridge. Uh, we're way down there at the bottom, uh, but we have some of the biggest revenues. If you look at our revenues right now, pro forma 2018, 144 million. It's 2018. Big, big numbers. Um, when you look at uh, the opportunity for us to grow, 2020, uh, we're looking. $650 million, 2021, $920 million. Uh, and so you look at uh, the opportunity for Red, White, and Bloom to be coming out uh, through the capital markets uh, as we are coming, I believe we're targeting a list somewhere around the middle of September, um, will be uh, an incredible opportunity to get involved in this uh, fantastic industry in the United States. So, um, and we're underpinning that with uh, a brand strategy, second to none, we're talking to uh, big brands that are coming into the space right now. We're listing uh, in big, big uh, boxes as well, which we have uh, uh, lots of uh, conversations going on with right now. Um, so the opportunity has never been greater right now in the United States, and we're very excited to be here. Uh, I just want to get uh, through this and, and get us back on track, because I'm going to be up here in, in, in a panel, and I guess right after this. Um, so um, happy to answer any questions and or uh, uh, take some more questions on uh, on uh, on the panel. So, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, man.